rely heavily on their abilities. And let's be frank, what team doesn't rely on its abilities? Looking yeah. at Joe's team, I mean, he's relying on the Drought, relying on those Intimidates. I'd say Regilecki probably functions okay without Transistor, but even the the Venusaur requires that Chlorophyll to, to be the, the threat it is. Okay, maybe Evil Tile can do without the Dark Aura as well, but it's still going to change those numbers and could mess around when it comes to Joe making these plans. So does have to be a little bit careful as the trainers look like they're locked in, looking very comfortable and, and pleased with their decision making. Should be a fantastic game to send one of these players through into day number two. Well, let's get the action started here for our featured match in Swiss round number eight between Ben Grismer and Joseph Ugardi. We've got Kyogre and Barrascuta for Ben, and we also have the Venusaur and the Yveltal here for Joe. Now, Barrascuta, let's talk about it a little bit. It's on the field, and it's in the rain. That's sort of exactly where it wants to be. That's yeah. that's the setup for everything Barrascuta. I've danced around the idea of it, but I've never been able to make this Pokemon work. The only issue is, yes, it's super cool that it's in the rain, but... That rain could easily get taken away uh, as soon as we uh, manage to, you know, switch in a Groudon if you're if you're in Joe's case. Yeah, if the Groudon could switch in. Maybe we see uh, Weezing. I mean, I think this matchup gets incredibly interesting when you take a look at who wants to have control of the weather. But Ben wants to preserve the Barrascuta, and here comes the Weezing. Going to go ahead and shut off some of these abilities. Yveltal also, also leaving the field, so what happened here? This Groudon be... coming in now! This is a crazy turn, because the rain is set up. The Groudon's not going to get to play around at all here. The Groudon doesn't get its drought, so it doesn't get control in the rain. The Kyogre's still in a decent position, right? The Kyogre's still in the rain, feeling pretty good. Of course, it does have to worry about this Venusaur, but... If you could just deal with that Groudon immediately, this could be a whole new ball game. And I'm curious to see where the Venusaur goes. Maybe the Venusaur is just going to leave that Kyogre alone. Um, but, oh, Kyogre just goes for it. Water spout immediately. Yeah. Bye, Groudon. Groudon is out of here with a one-hit knockout. Venusaur takes a decent amount of damage. But the G-Max Vine Lash now, as a retort, goes right into the Weezing. Wanted to try to take out the Barrascuto that was right there. But now, Kyogre... This is going to take a bit from the G-Max Vine Lash, but it's still relatively healthy. But Vi Kyogre's done exactly what it needed to do. Kyogre has been able to just deal with the Groudon. It doesn't have to worry about this horrible weather war. I mean, it's just so back and forth. It it's really tough to play through uh, in a number of instances. I'm not a big fan of it myself. I don't like opting into it as a team builder. But just taking that out the equation, yeah, the Kyogre's taken a bit of damage now from the G-Max Vine Lash. That's not ideal but it can still throw out these massive water spouts if it needs to, and it's still got control of the rain because of how Ben set up this turn. So the yeah. Kyogre just water spouting in the rain. Look at that damage, even on the evil tile. Yes, it's going to get to recover oh, here. Oh, no, it but, does uh, not. Not when you target the Weezing. No, a big protect coming out from Ben to be able to stop the Oblivion Wing and all the HP that Joe would have received back. Weezing is still getting taken down quite low, and the Kyogre did get knocked out, but the rain is still active. And so Barrascuta could come back in, maybe be able to at least fire off some water-type attacks, mm -hmm. but it will not have access to its ability until that Weezing goes down. Well, Barrascuta as well has, has an interesting move pool, and I don't know if Ben wants to reveal all of the available moves for it, but if it could weave in an attack that, that just tidies up, uh, this could be a problem. And not going to be the Barrascuta right now, though. It's Reggie Gigas time, because the Weezing's not going to be around for much longer, so you need to capitalize on that. And Reggie Gigas could just start tidying up here for a little bit. It's going to take a lot to knock it out, and, and as long... The issue is, is if you if you go after the Weezing, great, you're just getting hit by the Regigigas until you get rid of the Weezing. Um, but then if you leave the Regigigas, if you go after the Regigigas, the Weezing's there just enabling it really, really hard. So uh, a lot to go through. And, and you, you want the Regigigas to be playing within this slow start situation uh, that it, it probably is, is more accustomed to. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Weezing right now is going to shut off the slow start and... Slow start means for the first five turns, Pokemon's attack and speed stats are halved. So that's definitely something that Joe doesn't want to play against right now, and that's a quick 
concede, Ben is going to go ahead and take the first game 1-0. That's interesting. I don't know if Joe was completely out. Maybe he just knew he had no answer to a Regigigas regardless of, of slow start or not. But that is a very quick concede, you know, realizing that the loss of the Groudon was maybe too much for him to handle. Maybe the Pokemon in the back was something a little more supportive. Um, but Ben, oh, that was... It was a team and a half, and we didn't even see uh, the Shed Injure, we didn't see the Shadow Rider Calyrex, but the wheezing play and the way that was organized just worked so well for him. Maybe that forces uh, Joe's hand a little bit, right? Maybe that forces you to lead the Grout on, so at least if, if Ben doesn't lead wheezing, at least you get the Drought for a little bit. Yeah, that, that's entirely possible. I mean, I, I still think that there are ways that Ben can position his Pokemon around that, but Joe definitely has ways to adapt to going into this second game here. Uh, you know, uh, I, d I don't think Shedinja is the play. I think there's... I, I think, I think Shedinja's like, out. I, yeah, I, I definitely just the, don't think you bring that. The threats that are available on the other side just do not make it particularly worth it. Evil Tal and Groudon. He's not going to leave both his restrictions at home. You're going to have to deal with one of them. Um, the Barrascuda, we didn't really see much from it, apart from the, the threat of it being around. Um, we didn't get, you know, any confirmation on the ability, any anything like that. It does have its... Swiss you know, Swim Swiss and swim. Propeller Tail. Yeah, the, and the, the Propeller Tail is the particularly interesting one because it does ignore redirection. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, I think that's one of the big ones, especially if you're playing against a Storm Drain Gastrodon. I think that's huge if you're going to be Dynamaxing. But is, is this format safe for the Gastrodon? You know, this format's not been as heavy on something like the Amoongus. So based on the fact that like, we saw in game number one, Ben is so committed to just keeping that rain up. And he played the whole game in the mindset, I will keep the rain in play. And I would, you know, position my board so rain is always on. Even in the face of the Venusaur, he was fine with it. He said, you know what, I'll just leave Kyogre in, I'll water spout and go for it. There is a mix-up, though, in yeah. the leads, as it's going to be this Regigigas and Weezing. Wow. Maybe seeing just how frustrated that made Joe in game number one, leaning into that a little bit and saying, you know what, you don't seem to have many answers to this. But there you go. You know, this is exactly the scenario you were talking about, where the Weezing is on the field, Joe has led the Groudon, and there is no mm -hmm. sun to be had here. And now that Regigigas has that slow start shut off, and it will be able to dish out a ton of damage. But that is kind of something that we had identified early on, is that if you don't have a way to deal with that damage output from a Regigigas, it really can start to run through your team. It's and so... <laughs> What kind of defensive switches are you going to need to have here? I feel like Incineroar is a pretty big option. Well, particularly now, the way that people are building their teams. But you can't, because of the Weezing. The, yeah, the last time the, we saw this wheezing Regigigas combo, that was still in, a, in the Urshifu times, if you will. And the goal was the Regigigas player was avoid the Urshifu at all costs, because it will knock you out. That's not really a threat anymore. That's not something that people are bringing to many teams. I've seen a smattering of it in some of these games, and unsurprisingly, here goes Regigigas with, of course, that uh, Dynamax. Joe has to match it, I think, or else his Pokemon are going to get readily knocked out. Um, he also needs to find a way to, to get rid of this Weezing, So I think once the Weezing goes down, this Regigigas is easy to start picking off. Yeah, it all comes down to what this Weezing does this first turn. I, I mean, a lot of Weezing that are next to Regigigas will also be running some supportive coverage besides, like, the protection that we saw earlier. Uh, but it will be a quick max strike coming out here, targeting into Joe's Yveltal. will be able to drop the speed of both the Yveltal and the Groudon. But Nothing wrong with some good old speed control. Max strike works just as well as a max airstream. Uh, a little bit different, but the Weezing is just down. And this now means this Regigigas is going to be going real slow. Yes, it will. And of course, as the Weezing gets knocked out as well, all the other abilities on the field mm -hmm. will also activate. So we get the Dark Aura coming through from the Yveltal. We also have the Drought from the Groudon setting the sun. Mm -hmm. And we get the turn order uh, kind of put together there as well. So, uh, you know, we just get some confirmations on how this all works. Groudon's Precipice Blades, yep, into the Regigigas, single target, good amount of damage, not really enough to be threatening a knockout, but Ben is, is kind of in this awful uh, 1v2 position now, because this Regigigas is, is, and I hate to say it, nigh on useless with the slow start ability this early on. Of course, it can get there, and it can get back to being a, a useful Pokemon, but it's going to take time, and I think in that time, Joe is going to be able to apply enough pressure, turn the screw strongly enough to the point that, oh well, 
I'm just going to be able to, to deal with you. Yes, the Kyogre comes back in quite like that. Um, and it does get control of the weather, but Joe's now free to, to switch around and control that weather for later. Yeah, it's going to be a precarious situation for both of our players. You know, I think Joe absolutely can preserve the Groudon, get the sun set back up. That could also be a predictable switch, you know, in, in, a, in a few ways. So... I mean, and could also, you know, try to move around some pieces. He's definitely got options on what can switch in, right? The Venusaur is going to be fine with it. The Porygon 2 is probably going to be relatively fine with it. Uh, so definitely options there. Uh, unless he's bought, you know, Regieleki and Incineroar, then his options get a little more limited. But I, I think, based on what we saw in game number one, probably looking at something of a different... Maybe not the Venusaur, actually, just because we've already seen the Dynamax. It does get a little bit funky with the Venusaur, I think, when you don't get to Gigantamax it. But I've seen players do it, and I do very much respect it. Here comes some confirmation. It is Venusaur, okay. Uh, I just uh, just the thought that he's not going to be able to use that, that G-Max Vine Lash, and there's the very wise Max Guard as well. Yeah, no, that's incredibly smart, because, you know, you don't want your Yveltal to take too much damage. If Joe can continue to hold on to those Max Airstream boosts, then that's a Yveltal that's probably never going down. You've got Oblivion mm -hmm. Wing to continue to grab that H HP back, and you're also at this point trying to stall out this Regigigas. Well, now you've got the option, you, you know, if you leave Venusaur in here, okay, it's just going to get knocked out because it can't take another water spout, but you could just switch it right back for the Groudon, and the Groudon with the Drought, definitely going to be able to take those water spouts nice and easy. Your Evil Tile is going to be able to start causing some problems and maybe wearing down the Kyogre to take away the threat of water spout, force it into the Origin Pulse. And I think Joe's just in such a commanding position here because that Regigigas is sat. It's about to be its third turn of Dynamax and it's still getting absolutely nothing done. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough when that Regigigas does have that slow start ability. But here comes the Groudon. So nice rotating door Pokemon here for Joe just to be able to preserve that weather and also keep that Yveltal safe. Now that the Drought is active, Kyogre's Water Spouts are not going to be doing nearly as much. You'll see here even at full HP, just about a third to that Groudon. And now Yveltal can fire back and Dark Aura boosted Max Darkness, bringing that Kyogre down to one. Uh, that Kyogre just clinging on there, lowering the special defense all the way. Evil Toll will take some damage, of course, but that's just the Kyogre taking that hit really nicely. Uh, the Max Strike trying to get some speed control here. Uh, don't know if I could really say, you know, it's particularly um, helping out, but it's doing its best. It's trying. I think I'll give it that. Yeah, I mean, the max strikes are still very useful just to kind of keep the speed tiers in check for all of these Pokemon. You don't want this Yveltal to get too out of hand, knowing that it does have the ability to go a little bit quicker and get those Oblivion Wings off. The Evil Tile does need to be checked, and, and it's nice and low, so anything could, could knock it out. But this Kyogre is also dangerously low. One health, just struggling. That's not a focus sash, ladies and gents at home. No. That is just... Good training and believing in your Kyogre. That does mean, of course, that, that Ben has the option to maybe pivot it out. Uh, based on the speed that it's been going, the Choice Scarf's a little bit telegraphed right now, and, and that just kind of gives that information over to Joe that, hey, just be careful. He could try and wrap up the game with a, a Choice Scarf Origin Pulse, for example. Uh, of course, I think it's fair to say that uh, Water Spout's off the table for now. Uh, but, you know, a late Origin Pulse could tidy up, especially if he has control of the weather. Oh, and a, Joe actually targeted into the Regigigas as well, the protected. So now that you also have that super fast Cheddar Rider Calyrex on the field, yes, it's going to take some damage from the Precipice Blades, but now I, that, that Cheddar Rider Calyrex is looking like it could get a nice knockout here. It could definitely pick one up, and it doesn't rely on its health pool to get the knockouts either. It's just in a position where it, it needs to just fire off a, a very quick, very early Astral Barrage, and then see how much damage it can do. Of course, you know, it's not going to be super effective, but Evil Tile's so low anyway, maybe you can just push yourself over the line just with that bit of damage, or even even get your Regigigas involved and see if it can maybe land just a little bit of something to, to knock this Evil Tile out. Yeah, Yveltal's going to go for a Protect. Good to be able to deny the knockout here, but this Astral Barrage is still going to connect onto the Groudon. Regigigas is just trying to buy some time at this point to be able to get that slow start off the field. But 
Reggie Gigas goes for the high horsepower right to the Groudon as well. Oh. It's not enough to knock it out. So Groudon is going to go for the heat crash here into the Calyrex. And now Ben is down to his final two Pokemon, having to bring the Kyogre back in. But at least the Reggie Gigas finally got its act together. Yeah, that's great. The Reggie Gigas is, is ready to go. And it, it's managed to sit on the field long enough, which I am genuinely impressed with, with this Reggie Gigas. Um, it needs to, to put in a bit of a shift now. And, and the big question is, is Joe going to allow his uh, Pokemon to just take a, an Origin Pulse here? Uh, you know, the the issue is, is what's in the back? Because Evil Tal, the, the Choice Scarf Kyogre is just going to be able to keep Origin Pulsing. Is it worth trying to switch out the Sun and save that for later? Maybe, so you can get the, of course, the Chlorophyll going on your Venusaur, and, and that would be a, a big play. But, you know, would the Venusaur just get knocked out on the way in? Are you just going to be giving up too many Pokemon at once? And, and that's a, a tough concern, I think, for Ben. He does have to be careful of what he's locking into here uh, with that Kyogre. Can't be, can't be silly. And, and if you lock into Origin Pulse, I, I, I hate to say it, there is a chance that it just misses. So the Groudon does have to leave. But Joe very much always respects that you need the Sun and you need control of that. But Venusaur coming in right now uh, is going to be struggling a little bit to, to deal that damage, uh, to, to deal with that. Origin Pulse wants to connect onto the Venusaur that just switched in. It does That's look it. like it will get the attack off. And that Venusaur is going to be knocked out here. Yeah, the Venusaur just fell very, very quickly. And it was actually the Venusaur that you, you kind of wanted the sun for, right? You wanted to set that up for Venusaur. Now that's gone. That was what was switched in. Uh, very interesting to know what Joe's last Pokemon is. Regieleki, oh, that, that should be about it for this uh, Kyogre then. The big concern was, can you outrun the Choice Scarf Kyogre? I think I've found the answer. Yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure Regieleki is a really good answer to that. Uh, and it only needs to do one hit point of damage. So uh, I think it's it's got the output. And while Regieleki deals with Kyogre, I think Evil Tower will deal with this Regigigas quite handily as well. Yeah. Get all that health back as well. Yep. Should be should be interesting to know, you know, that, that Joe made these these quick changes, and maybe this is actually why he didn't want to play out the rest of game one. Didn't want to reveal that he bought the Regieleki, okay. and just said, you know what, I'm done, I'm good. Just let's move on uh, and go from there. But hey, Regigigas is going to try its best, taking advantage. Out of play to your outs. Uh, yeah, it's going to try and get these knockouts. Maybe relying, of course. Um, on this Regieleki uh, not being able to do the requisite amount of damage. But it's only got half of Regigigas' health bar to go. So I think it's going to be able to get that. But I do respect Ben for, for playing this one all the way through. There's the confirmation of the drought coming back. No surprises there. And, and getting that Regieleki in safely has been absolutely huge for, the, for Joe's endgame. I think the other thing, too, is that you get to learn more about this Regieleki. You know, you saw the Thunderbolt reveal. So... It's a pretty good indicator that this is going to be a more special attack focused. Reggie Lucky, maybe you get a bit more information out of it, but nope, that yep. second Thunderbolt is all it's going to take for Joe to tie up this series 1 1 in Swiss Round 8. Mm, the lead, the Reggie Gigas wheezing lead, wasn't quite the one. The wheezing went down way too quick for it to have any impact in the game, and I don't think Ben ever really had a way back in. He tried, he let that Reggie Gigas get up to speed, but just wasn't able to pull it off. Really good stuff from both of these trainers, though. I mean, this is this is what we love about our top trainers playing against each other at an international championship. Uh, both of these players are hungry to be able to turn their top cut performances into international wins. And these are both interesting teams, I gotta say. Do you make any changes if you're Ben? Here's, here's the question, you know, he just took it got quite well handled by Joe, I think it's fair to say. Do maybe look at the Barrascooter again? Maybe save the Regigigas for later and try another one of those audacious early wheezing plays? Just seems a lot more successful, right? I kind of like the wheezing. I feel like even that second game would have turned out differently if that wheezing had protected. Right. I think being cheeky with the Weezing did cost him, and maybe that's the change that it needs, is just protect, take the first hit, and then go from there. If that's enough, uh, more power to it. Reggie Gigas is pretty bulky. 
Reggie Gigas is, is a nightmare to take down. It does have a very high stat line and, and does cause problems just by being able to take hits. And there's no fighting type attack on Joe's side of the field, so everything is going to be at least neutral uh, just going into there. And he doesn't have that easy, okay, just a quick close combat or, or you know, a sacred sword even. Um, so a, a lot of work to be done there. Uh, if you're in, in Ben's position. And that Regigigas Weezing combo has to be in prime position throughout the whole game. Yep. Well, I, I also kind of wonder too, what are Ben's best answers to Venusaur and Regieleki? Venusaur and Regieleki kind of feel like they, they are must-brings when you have so much presence on the team from Barracuda and Kyogre. And even if you're not going to be getting the abilities, I do feel like Venusaur and Regieleki have seen quite a bit of success just being yeah. on their own. I guess the question is, can you get in a position where Shedinja can sit on the field forever? Uh, uh, Joe put out that Evil Tail Groudon very, very early last game. That's true. If Ben had got through that and had, either. and had the Shedinja, might have been able to just sit on the field and, and do the shed injure thing where you, you just don't take damage simply. You do not take damage and you do not get knocked out. So, unless of course the Reggie Lucky is holding uh, something a little bit crazy uh, in the move pool, but I, maybe that's why Joe didn't want to give it away. Maybe that's why Joe has been keeping it so secretive for so long. I uh, just wanted to make sure that Ben never gets the opportunity to explore what his team can and potentially do to that shed injure. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, you know, Shedinja has five weaknesses <laughs> and uh, I've seen quite a few <laughs> options for that on Josie. I mean, if you get rid of the Yveltal, you get rid of two of them. Yeah, and if you get rid of Groudon, you get rid of one. Uh, no, you don't get rid of Fire entirely. Um, but you might get rid of Rock, depending on, on its moveset. True. Ghost, I think he's good on. Uh, maybe Shadow Ball and Porygon too. True. We're just spitballing here. I haven't. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, if, I, I do, I do agree. Shedinja is not the call for this match. It would be there's it's there's a tough sell. Yeah, there's a specific endgame position where it can flourish. I just don't think we're ever going to get there. Yeah. We've seen Shedinja find more success lately, though. I think it was since Liverpool Regionals, it's seen a lot more play. It, it's something that uh, when talking to Ashton earlier, he said you have to make cuts and you have to make sacrifices when you're building your team and there's some things you know you have to admit that you're just going to lose to over the course of the tournament yes if that's if that's shed injure you just have to hope you just don't you, hit one. you do not hit one and he was telling me you know he had one matchup that he really really despised and, and really didn't want to play against but he hit it and he, he took that loss and, and had to bounce back from it so could be the same kind of thing and, and for ben is this the team that he fears, right? He doesn't want to deal with two Restricteds that both handle his his tech Pokemon very, very well. And it, it's going to be a big ask. I am excited to see this game three, though. I can see both trainers getting very, very close to being ready to, to play this one out. And one of these players is going to be advancing today, too. The other one's going to have to fight a little bit harder to get there. Well, let's go ahead and find out what's going to happen as we enter into game number three between Joe and Ben. Ben with same leads as game number two with that Regigigas and that Weezing, but Joe switching it up a little bit. We're seeing Porygon 2. The, the Porygon 2 could cause some real problems here, especially if you're Ben, if you're relying on getting your Choice Scarf Kyogre in. Well, that Choice Scarf Kyogre and that Swift Swim Barrascuda do not function, and of course the Shadow Rider Calyrex do not function well in a Trick Room. They do not like it. It is not a time for them, and I really don't think Ben has an answer to uh, the Porygon 2, unless that Weezing is carrying Taunt, in which case, well, that Weezing might just get Precipice Blades before it even gets to Taunt. So, gonna have to be cheeky trying to weave in a Taunt if you want to stop the Trick Room, or you just have to let it go up and, and hope for the best. Well, Regigigas is going to Dynamax, so... We're at least gonna see that. We're also seeing a Dynamax coming out from Joe's side of the field. Yep, the follow-up Dynamax makes uh, a lot of sense here. You need to kind of match the damage, and yep, the Groudon. Probably my preferred choice over the Porygon 2. We've seen Porygon do do some things in the past, but yes, Groudon makes the most sense at this point in time. We're going to see a max strike hit right into the Porygon 2, really going to try to at least deal some damage to it, or at least threaten it to potentially have to go for something like a recover if that is one of the moves that it is holding. 
but Taunt goes off. Oh, does get the Taunt down. So the Porygon 2, uh, not able to, to throw that out. I think the Weezing is going to get immediately felled, though. Uh, the Chuckaberry is going to try its best to deal with this Max Quake, but this is, of course, a Dynamax Groudon, and Max Quake does a whole helping of damage. Chuckaberry, though, keeps it around, looking a lot better in Game 3 for Ben Grisma. Yeah, I mean, that Max Strike was so good because it did allow the Weezing to get the Taunt yep. off before the Groudon could actually go for an attack. And so that Porygon 2 will not be able to use the Trick Room after that Taunt. And so what does Joe do to adapt to this? Got to get the Porygon out, I think. Otherwise, the Porygon's just liable to get knocked out. Still needs to target down that Weezing, but cannot let this Regigigas run away with the game. Even if the Weezing protects, I still think the, the Groudon may just have enough to, to get there. And now the Shuckerberry is gone. That's going to be absolutely huge for him. Uh, just making sure that damage goes down and, and sticks every single time. But the Porygon 2 not getting its Trick Room set up means this could be a very bad bring for Joe. If this is a Pokemon that he gives up just completely as a, a sacrifice to Ben, then your team is, is getting run a little bit backwards, essentially. Um, but Porygon 2 is going to try and stay in, see if it can shake that Taunt and get the Trick Room up. Well, the Protect comes through from the Weezing, and now another Max Strike to follow up from this Regigigas. Hoping that it's going to be enough to knock out this Porygon 2, and that it is. So that is one knockout for Ben. But now, how does this Groudon respond from Joe's side? The Protect did come through from the Weezing, but here comes the Max Quake. And with that Protect, it actually survives! Close on. This means that the Regigigas gets another turn of being able to, to fire off normal attacks without the hindrance of slow start. Weezing putting in such a shift. I thought eyeballing the, the health bar, I thought the Weezing was going to be knocked out even through the Protect. But what do I know? Groudon able, not able to do enough right away there. Evil Tal coming in though, hasn't been afflicted by any of the max strikes will be able to pick off this Weezing before the Regigigas gets its turn to attack and before that Regigigas is impacted. So a lot of, of work to do for Joe, but he's probably got the two best Pokemon to do it. Yeah, so one more turn of Dynamax for that Groudon and this Regigigas. But Yveltal just going for a Protect. Joe knows that this Protect can stall out this last turn of Dynamax as Regigigas goes for the Max Strike. Into the protected Yveltal, still going to do a decent amount through that protect, but more importantly, continuing to drop the speed. This Groudon is now at minus three, and the Willow was Ooh. coming out from the Weezing as well, burning the Groudon. Sure, the Max Quake is going to go through and likely knock out this Weezing here. Yep, there it goes. But that Groudon now, with its attack stat halved. This Groudon's kind of out for the game now, really. I mean, it's not out, but it, it's not going to be able to do anywhere near as much damage. That said, the Regigigas is kind of out for the next five turns, which is going to be a while until that Regigigas is putting in work. Uh, and the Drought immediately coming up, though, does mean Ben has this free switch into Kyogre. Kyogre can then just uh, fire off a big Water-type attack and uh, cause a ton of problems. The Evil Tile's already been chipped. The Groudon will be forced to switch out. And then, you know, you know what kind of switch-ins Joe's been trying to make for that Groudon. The Regieleki's not going to be able to take it. It's just not bulky enough. And if you have the Venusaur, well, you don't have Regieleki and, and you have to play around the sand, uh, the, the drought and the rain. So, um, you know, you need to be able to play it around the weather. But Kyogre's Drizzle comes in. That's what we're going to have for this turn, guaranteed. I think as long as moves hit, Ben's going to be feeling really, really good in this turn. Yeah. Dynamax is over. After that choice of sending out Kyogre, players now have some time to figure out what this next move is going to look like. Kyogre's turn is put down as much damage as possible. That's the, the answer here, is make sure any switching is completely punished. Make sure this, uh, this Groudon is either forced to protect or, or leave the field because it needs drought so badly. But whatever comes in, do not let it come in for free. That's the big thing uh, to, to really harp on, is, is make sure it gets caught. Maybe even if you can weave it in, if you're smart enough, let that Regigigas have a turn. Let the Regigigas, you know, try and maybe get that little extra bit of damage that's needed. Kyogre, though, with control in the speed war, just able to water spout. Not enough for knockouts, though. No, the Max Quakes with the plus three defense, special defense boost going to be pretty big here. Yveltal does take a large chunk of damage with, with that Oblivion Wing into that Kyogre will be able to restore some of that HP back. Mm -hmm. But Regigigas 
still gets to go for a Giga Impact, hitting it right into the Yveltal. So yeah. that is going to be a huge knockout here. And now Joe down to his final two Pokemon. Well, what's kind of crazy here is Joe has now left his, his ground on in, right? That just means he's not going to have control of the weather at any further point. Ben still has a Pokemon count advantage. He's going to be able to leave the field with the Kyogre, bring it back in, pick something new up with that Choice Scarf as well. Um, the Regieleki, yeah, it's going to be a problem as such, but there's definitely answers to it. And yeah, Joe, this Groudon's not going to do anywhere near enough damage to be useful. So everything rides on this Regieleki. Its spread moves are not huge damage moves. Well, Electro Web. Okay. Still a pretty good spread damage option. We'll be able to get the knockout onto the Kyogre and start to drop this Regigigas to speed, even though right now, not going to be super, super important. Mm -hmm. And it does have to recharge, so Groudon gets one chance to be able to fire off this Precipice Blades. Still not enough to take out the Regigigas, but Regieleki does have the ability to go for a quick Electro Web again on this next turn, depending on what the final oh. Pokemon is, and it's Sheninja! This is absolutely huge. This Regieleki I don't think can touch the Shedinja. And the Groudon is definitely going to be uh, struggling uh, a little bit, depending on it. I'm not struggling, but the Groudon needs to be careful because this Shedinja could just like make sure the Groudon goes down. Oh, no. He's oh. doing it. He's going to let it happen. The Endure as well, the Protect. This is so audacious. Oh my gosh, the Electro Web coming through from the Regieleki, but... Doesn't matter, oh it's Wonder Guard, gosh. and we know what happens at the end of the turn. Oh, Groudon's gone for it too! Oh, the Heat Crash! Oh, oh. no! Shedinja takes it. The yeah. Hits. yeah, it's the, the only way you can hit it. Oh my lord, this is... This is not what I expected to see from the Shedinja. No, I mean, uh, Shedinja has been rising in popularity, and we, you know, a lot of them are running safety goggles. Some of them are still running Focus Sash, but see the Electro Web come through. The Regigigas will get knocked out. Still cannot hit the Shedinja. Yeah, he's the he's, Poltergeist. He, oh, oh, this has to knock out. If it doesn't knock out, it's game over. Is it going to be enough? It, oh, it is, enough. yes. It is out. enough. Groudon taken down. I love that Ben let that burn wait to just do a little tick extra using the Endure really, really nicely. And this Reggie Lucky can't hit him. I don't think no. it has anything in its moveset unless there is a secret tech that Joe's hiding. Bounce? The bounce from earlier. And uh, Joe has to just <laughs> turn it in. The Shedinja finally comes through at the end of that set. Endure just.